Hello, welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram, your host, and this is our 145th episode recorded on September 7th, 2016. You want to see all of our shows? Go to Walk in the Park, walkinthepark.tv. We're on Channel 13 in Ithaca, New York, Pegasus Public Access Television, and uh, you can see all the shows, like I say, at our website there on the screen. This time we're going to go out to the Northwest United States to uh, some of you may have lived out there, been out there. We're going to go to Washington State to the North Cascade Mountains. I just did this last month, a couple of weeks ago actually, and I had a lot of fun exploring a new area to me. I've been to the Seattle area, but I've never been up into the North Cascades. It's been a long dream of mine. The Cascades are a mountain range that run from Northern California up into British Columbia, and uh, they're sort of a continuation of the Sierra Nevada. If you're familiar with them, in California. Here's a map here showing just the uh, the landforms and uh, there's the city of Seattle and that's where I flew into and I put a star up in the North Cascade Mountains because there's a national park up there and several other associated areas. So I flew across the United States and here I am in Washington State going across the Columbia River which I guess is that river that goes up and down. You see the Columbia coming to the bottom of the map there and then goes up a couple of different branches into uh, central Washington there. So here I am flying across in dry area, very arid area of Washington State. And finally get over the Cascade Mountains, which are extremely rugged, highly glaciated, and still have some glaciers on them. But uh, the Ice Age really did some work on them. And as we will see, so uh, here's a mountain that does have some glaciers on it. Uh, one, of, one of the North Cascades is over 300 glaciers in the North Cascades. A lot of them have melted quite a bit because of global warming, but this is uh, probably more glaciers here than the rest of the, at least certainly the the uh, lower 48. And finally over the Puget Sound coming into Seattle and where I visited some uh, my cousin and his family and then I took off up towards the uh, North Cascades. Here is a map of the National Park. It's a National Park area and then there's some National Recreation areas associated with it. Ross Lake National Recreation Area, you can see just above where it says North Cascades National Park and the Lake Chelan National Recreation Area, which I didn't get down to. And there's some National Forest Areas. They're all part of this big complex, which is really amazing in the North Cascades. It goes right on up to the Canadian border. Here's my first view of it. I'm driving from the west on Route 20, Washington State Route 20, which is the North Cascades Scenic Highway. And my first view of glaciers and the mountains uh, from the west. And finally, I entered the park, and this is their park entrance. Here's the park map. It's hard to see any detail on there, but you can see there's a rectangle in the middle, and that's sort of the big, uh, the, the area that's uh, most heavily used where there's some campgrounds and stuff. I'll zoom in. Uh, there are campgrounds and I stayed in the campground that says Colonial Creek, just below the center of the picture. There's a lake there called Diablo Lake, and then another lake called Ross Lake. Those were created by dams long before the creation of the park. The park was created, oh, about fi almost 50 years ago in the late 60s, 68, 69, and uh, the dams were um, built back in the 1920s for hydroelectric power for um, the city of Seattle and uh, possibly water too, I'm not sure. So anyway, I went into the Colonial Creek Campground, which is that, that arm of Diablo Lake, which is in the center, that extends down into the mountains. And then there's a creek that comes up to them, which will actually go up along later. And here is my campsite among some really big trees. Look at that huge log on the right. So I don't know if that shows up in your screen. And then some big trees there. A lot of old growth forest in there. So. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take a look at we're gonna take a look at some uh, some video now. Let me see what I've got here. We're gonna from the Colonial Creek Campground, and uh, I'll, well, I'll tell you in the video what I'm doing. So this is my first morning in uh, North Cascades National Park and I've got a beautiful little campsite here uh, with huge old growth trees around me that stretch up really tall and uh, not the sort of thing you see in the east very much, maybe a little bit. 
Um, it's a beautiful morning. We've got great weather this week. It's been going up in the low 80s and uh, cool at night. I was down probably in the 50s, maybe maybe even 50 or 40, 49, something like that. Anyway, I was fine in the tent and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing some big mountains today. Okay, that's a little taste of the mountains there. You see most of them from the highway, um, and it's if you really want to get into the mountains and see the spectacular scenery, you kind of have to go on a long hike, maybe up a long steep trail. So uh, it's not quite as accessible as some of the older, more developed parks like Yosemite, for instance. But uh, one of the curious things I'm sure you noticed was the color of the water. Now that's not what Cayuga Lake looks like. Uh, this is Diablo Lake looking south towards Colonial Creek Campgrounds, right in the back there actually, and then uh, looking to the west to the dam area where the hydroelectric dam is, and then looking uh, a little to the north, there's a little peak at it. Now, um, by the way, I did mention the Skagit River, that's what uh, is dammed up here, and the hydroelectric project farther down, a little farther downstream. So anyway, this um, Color is called by caused by something called glacial flour or glacial milk, or in, ger in German it's Gletschermilch, and uh, it's caused by the glaciers up on the mountainsides grinding away at the rock. In the bottom of the glacier, there's a great deal of rock fragment which is pulverized against the bedrock over which the uh, glacier is passing. And then when the water, when the glacier melts and water's coming off of that, like it has uh, dirt, particularly during the summer, it gives this uh, turquoise bluish cast to the water from the dissolved minerals that um, come down the, the mountainside. So the, so the streams are all milky looking. This is Thunder Creek near the Colonial Campground. And this is the uh, Nooksack River up near Mount Baker. But they're all may, uh, fed by meltwater from glaciers. So and when they get into the lake, um, they create this beautiful blue color, turquoise color, caused by suspended minerals that, um, that stay in sp suspension pretty much. And so you can see that up in the Canadian Rockies and Lake Louise. A lot of people have seen that up there in Banff National Park in um, Alberta, British Columbia, and so forth. So, um, what we're going to do now is, oh, I'm going to show you where I did. Oh, the end of that video, I went actually out of the park to the east and was recommended by the park service that I go check this out to a couple of different places. There's Rainy Pass, it says, and there's Rainy, um, Rainy Lake Trail. And then on the right, it says Washington Pass Overlook. And I had a sign in the video that you may have noticed. And these are the mountains on the eastern side of the divide, I guess, the eastern side of the, the Cascades, and they're much drier. They don't get as much uh, rain and snow. The Cascades get a huge amount of rain and snow, over 100 inches of rain, of melted precipitation per year, and uh, the east side gets much less. So it's sort of arid or semi-arid, 
and um, and very rugged. All of the mountains are rugged. This is what they call an arete, where uh, glaciers on either side of the mountain and during the ice age had uh, eroded away the side of the mountain, leaving this really knife edge like uh, or saw like like um, pinnacle there. Okay, so. Um, pretty amazing landscape. Let me see what I've got next for videos here. Okay, we're going to go, uh, by the way, this is Walk in the Park, walkinthepark.tv, Pegasus uh, Studio, Public Access Television, Ithaca, New York, Channel 13. See all of our shows on all of our episodes on walkinthepark.tv. So we're going to, on the way over to Washington Pass, I stopped at Rainy Pass Picnic Area because that's the way I could get on the trail to Rainy Lake. And it's a very easy trail. I was in the mood for something easy that day. So it's like a mile or so, maybe a little more, uh, maybe two miles. Uh, and you can actually take a wheelchair along that trail. <laughs> Here's a family going on with toddlers. And look, it's, a, it's a, almost a paved trail, and it's like going into Taganic Falls or something. Very easy, and there's some interpretive signs along the way uh, of the various trees, Pacific Silver Fir, there's the tree, and the, you know, a number of other species around there. And finally, you get to this lake called a Glacial Cirque, which was created by a glacier sitting on the mountainside years, many years ago, thousands of years ago probably, probably during the Ice Age in this case, sitting on the mountainside and like this glacier which is much higher up uh, actually what's called Mount, Mount Shuksan which hopefully we'll have a chance to see um, and the glacier sits in this bowl and it grinds out this this bowl and it, it eats away at the uh, mountain behind it leaving the steep wall behind it so this is an old glacial cirque without a glacier in it and the glacier also pushes up moraine it pushes up debris rock and earth and so forth in front of it uh, which dams up the lake so um, um, then when the uh, glacier is melted away you get a lake called a tarn so uh, we're going to watch another little video here about Rainy Lake let's see Rainy Lake yes So you saw that uh, long cascade coming off the mountain from melting snow above because there are a lot of snow fields left over from last winter and they call these mountains the Cascades because there are so many waterfalls like that falling off the mountains from melting snow and from glaciers. We're going to go back to Colonial Creek area the, um, where my campground is and take a hike on the Thunder Creek Trail just for a couple of miles to go up into old growth forest. So here's the Colonial Creek campground up at the upper left there. 
and then Thunder Creek feeds Diablo Lake there. And I walked up to about where that intersection is in the middle, goes up the 4th of July Pass. Uh, I didn't go up there. That was a very steep climb. I would like to have done it, but I just didn't quite have the energy for it because a spectacular view of mountains and glaciers from there. But I wanted to see the old growth forest up the Thunder Creek Valley. So, so I got on the trail and I hiked on up to that intersection right in the center there and then pretty much turned around and came back. So here's the trail, trailhead right there by the campground. And let's go to Thunder Creek. Okay, Thunder Creek, but uh, great old uh, western uh, red cedars and, and uh, fir trees and spruce trees and so forth, very amazing landscape. Once again, this is Walk in the Park, walkinthepark.tv, see all of our shows, public access television, Ithaca, New York, channel 13. Okay, so then I heard a lot about Mount Baker, which is a mountain that's over 10,700 feet high, lots of glaciers on it, and I really wanted to get a good look at a very glaciated mountain. So I took off from my uh, campground. If you look on the uh, right there, you see that loop in the road, and that is in North Cascades. Actually, uh, actually in between, not all the way to the right, but actually the, the bulge up there, that's and with a little dip in it. It says North Cascades National Park, just right of center. Well, I left there and I went, all the way over to Cedro Woolley and then I headed up and eventually made my way into um, the road at the top that goes in almost the Canadian border to Mount uh, Mount Baker which I put a star on right there and you go into the National Forest Mars Mount Baker uh, Snoqualmie National Forest in um, there's a campground there and I stayed in it so uh, here's my as I'm heading in towards towards Mount Baker uh, just the edge of the National Forest, there's a Glacier Creek coming down. This is all, again, milky colored from the uh, glacial meltwater. And that's my first look at uh, Mount Baker. Amazing big old volcano. And here's my campground, Douglas Fir Campground. And I set up my little camp in there, stayed there a couple nights, right next to Nooksack River which again is uh, all milky with uh, glacial meltwater, as is this waterfall in the Nooksack River, the Nooksack Falls, I think it's called, which is about 100 feet high, and it was fun to go look at that. So um, then I uh, drove, uh, well, let's see, and now we're gonna head up, the next day I headed up to uh, Mount Baker to get up to a place, uh, you take this road that goes for many miles up the mountain, several thousand feet, to get to an area called Heather Meadows, and the parking area there and trails lead out from there and it's a pretty cool place so here I am up at Heather Meadows and I am about to head out behind me to head towards Mount Baker I didn't get all the way there but look at the snow behind me we're up over 5,000 feet here and head out on the Chain Lakes Trail and some views of Mount Baker along the trail here's here's the trail along a um, uh, a very steep slope with lots of rubble on it that slides down, scree slope I guess you'd call it. 
the same trail looking with Mount Baker and the view there. And finally I got out to this pass where I get a view of Mount Baker and then a ridge in between. And there was a family there that was um, playing in the snow, having a picnic. It's a pretty gentle walk, so uh, all kinds of folks were out there. And then some zoom-ins on the glaciers on Mount Baker. That's as close I get in with this shot, but I, oh, here we go. You can even see crevasses on the glacier there as it is moving down the mountain and moves over uh, rock obstacles and breaks. So that's pretty cool. So let's look at a, a short little video, about a minute of Mount Baker. It's a really amazing place. It's, it's really cool to get to see all those glaciers. You turn around and you start heading back and this is what you see. This spectacular mountain, very famous mountain called Mount Shuksan. And it's uh, over, it's about 9,100 feet high. It's not as high as Baker, but, but uh, high enough to have lots of glaciers hanging off it. Gets lots of snow, so it makes lots of glaciers. That's the difference with these mountains, is that they get so much rain and snow, particularly snow, obviously. Um, and they're not terribly high for Western, by Western standards, you know, 10,000 feet, although Mount Rainier is over 14,400 feet. It's one of the tallest mountains in the, in the uh, lower 48. Uh, actually, uh, except for Alaska, it is, it's among the tallest. Um, anyway, get a zoom in on some of the glaciers hanging off of Mount Shuksan. Look at those glaciers working their way down the steep mountainside and breaking off at cliffs. There's the brim of a cliff there. I'm going to show you now a video that I made of Mount Shuksan. Okay, we'll go to that. that you guys didn't do your panorama.
Pretty cool. So the, that's those are the two big mountains you have to um, look at. You have uh, available up at that uh, Heather Meadows place, and uh, uh, just look one way, you get Mount Baker. The other way, you get Mount Shuksan. This particular shot here that I finished off with is one of the most famous pictures in the world. My my photograph isn't, but it's one of the most famous mountains for photography, one of the most photographed mountains in certainly in the United States and maybe the world. And uh, there are many, many, many pictures of this. You see them in calendars and so forth. This little spot is called Picture, Picture Lake. It looks like it's way out in the wilderness, and it is, except it's right off the road to Heather Meadows, and there's a, a little half-mile trail that goes around Picture Lake, but uh, and a couple of spots that have been established for, for photographers and bird watchers and so forth. But uh, here's a here's just a sample picture of a much better photographer than I, taking it uh, a little bit later in the season, I guess. Uh, There's a guy from Brussels. Uh, I don't have his name right here, but um, people from all over the world take this picture. So it's a pretty cool spot. So uh, Mount Shuksan or Shuksan or whatever. And just to prove that I was there, I had another fellow who was actually a mountain climber. A guy named David was a mountain climber. He climbed this mountain like. He said summited seven times over various routes, climbing glaciers and so forth. So he was kind enough to take uh, my portrait there of with Mount Shuksan. And of course the breezes had broken up the beautiful reflection that I had a few minutes earlier. So there you go. North Cascades National Park, North Cascades, Mount Baker, um, the whole North Cascades area. Tremendous wilderness that has been uh, highly glaciated during the ice age and still has like I said over 300 glaciers in it so uh, if you get a chance if you're out in the Seattle area I highly recommend you go up there particularly Mount Baker that was a special special trip for me uh, to do this I've been waiting for years years ago when I worked in the state parks I had an employee that had worked in North Cascades and he had raved about it I said well it's on my list it had taken me about 20 years to actually get around to getting up in those mountains. I went hiking there once before when I was visiting relatives. Well, that's all I've got today and all I have time for. So thank you for joining me, and um, we'll see you again next time.